Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll explain the psychology behind self-esteem, how you might be sabotaging yourself, and of course, how to give yourself a boost. Self-esteem is defined as the degree to which you rate yourself positively, including your looks, your achievements, your abilities, and how well you think other people react to you, or how much you think other people like and accept you. Healthy self-esteem helps with mental health and resilience, low self-esteem can lead to depression. On that note, artificially high self-esteem or fake just pretending you think you're a good person is linked to risky behaviors and acting aggressively when you feel threatened, so faking it in this case also has some challenges. Where does self-esteem come from? It is part of our self-concept, aka our sense of identity of who we are as a person. We create our self-concept through self-knowledge. This knowledge comes from two main sources, ourselves through introspection and experimentation, so us getting to know ourselves inside out, thinking about what triggers us, why we behave the way we do, what we want to do next. And the other source is other people around us, how they react to us, how they tell us uh, who they tell us we are, and whether they accept us or not. In other words, identity is a social construct. But wait a second, can't I just decide who I am? I'm an adult, I'm in charge of my life, I say what goes? Well, to a point. Especially in childhood, you tend to believe what other people tell you about yourself. These messages can be anything from, oh no, you're so clumsy, to, oh yay, you're daddy's little helper. This information, because our brains like to be efficient, gets abstracted and you are easily turns into I am. Crucially, you may not remember when or where some of your self schemas came from because some of those childhood messages probably got pushed into your subconscious. Both conscious and subconscious schemas are mental representations that can be very helpful and save time. For example, you will have a schema of a restaurant in your mind so you know what to expect when you sit down at a table. If your waiter starts by handing you the check or the bill, that would be out of the norm. You might feel surprised and caught off guard and not quite sure what to do with that. Same for self schemas. They are persistent ideas that we carry around. They are scripts that can be tough to change because they've been with us for many years, often since childhood. And then if we try to change them, your mind might feel, again, surprised, caught off guard, and not quite sure what to do with it. So quick recap, healthy self-esteem is important for our well-being. It's part of our self-concept, which is based on what we know about ourselves and messages from other people that we may have internalized. Which brings us to point of sabotage and tip number one, Get curious about your thoughts. Next time you feel down, as soon as you can, get curious. In the moment itself, it's probably going to be difficult to, to stop the thought immediately, but as soon as you can, put on your archaeologist's hat, your, you know, go full Sherlock Holmes, whatever works for you, lab coat, whatever that may be. You are now an explorer and a scientist, and your mission is to dig into your mind. This thought you're thinking that gets you down, where does it come from? Whose voice is that in your head? When have you heard that for the first time? How is it trying to be helpful? And what else is also true? For example, if the thought is nobody likes me, I'm not wanted here. Where does that come from? This could be a scenario. Let's say you walked into a party and somebody there smiled at everyone except for you. Whose voice could that be? Could be an older sibling, a parent, or someone who would benefit from keeping you isolated from others. When have you heard that for the first time? Maybe an older sibling didn't want to play with you when you were younger. Maybe your parent has been overly critical of you while you were growing up. Or maybe an early romantic partner was overly jealous. So how is this trying to be helpful? Most negative thoughts are based in fear, so they are trying to protect your ego and keep it safe. For example, nobody likes me might encourage you to stay home by yourself and not go to the next party or invitation. That way nobody can reject you and nobody can criticize you for stuff that you're doing. So what else? 
could be true. At this party, there probably were also three or five or ten people who did smile at you and who did hug you and who did welcome you. So for some reason, your perception focuses on the ones that didn't. This list of questions isn't exhaustive, but it's a good start. So why would your brain do that? Why would it focus on the one person who didn't smile? Didn't we just establish that a healthy self-esteem is in our best interest? Going back to our self-concept, we have lived with these messages for a while. They become a bias, which is a tendency to think in a certain way. Over time, the more we repeat the thought, the more entrenched it becomes, and many biases then eventually turn into an attitude. This is true for most thoughts. The more you replay them, the more solidly they will be stored in your brain and the more easily they will be retrieved in similar situations. They literally become the automatic response because they are the dominant memory that is most readily available. Like deep grooves in the snow because you keep skiing down the same slopes. So again, tip number one. Reassess your own self-knowledge and check whether the thoughts you carry about yourself can be updated with some more supportive alternatives. Allow yourselves to unlearn and wipe those old tapes and record new scripts. Point of sabotage and tip number two have to do with the kind of knowledge that we infer from others and how we compare ourselves. Generally speaking, everyone wants to learn about themselves objectively, but we actually prefer information that is positive where we come out on top. This is called self-enhancement. We naturally compare ourselves to others all the time. Social comparison theory states that it's a natural urge that significantly influences our self-concept and well-being. Comparing ourselves upward to others who we think are better can be depressing, if you think you'll never get there, or inspiring if that gives you the motivation to take action and pursue your goals. Comparing yourself down to someone you think has it worse than you aligns with self-enhancement, so your self-esteem might get an artificial bump. Lateral comparisons would be to people you consider to be more or less equal. All of us spend a lot of time online these days. TV and media representations tend to edit according to current cultural biases and exaggerate whatever they so show. So you might see posts from celebrities who have teams of stylists helping them look the way they do, which for the vast majority of us is a level of upward comparison we will never reach. Likewise, you might see reports of people experiencing extreme hardships that you might never experience yourself. If those are your reference groups from where you are hoping to improve your self-esteem, be aware that they might be statistical aggregations, which is another way of saying you're looking at averages that don't actually exist in nature. Wanting to fit into that group might make you do things like go into debt to buy expensive gadgets or change your appearance so everything looks like you should fit in on the surface. Building this kind of identity is artificial because you will still attach your value to an outside comparison. Even with a downward comparison, your level of self-esteem still rests on other people having it worse. So a lateral comparison probably gives you the most realistic opportunity, but to be fair, when it comes to social media accounts, you're most likely sharing your own and seeing everyone else's highlight reels. So if comparison only builds artificial self-esteem, how can you get a proper healthy one? By disconnecting it from external sources as much as possible. Self-esteem is artificial as long as you're not actually doing things that you value as positive. If you admire people who do something for the environment, if you want to add environmentally conscious person to your self-concept, it may not be enough to recycle and donate money once or twice a year. Maybe try volunteering to clean up a local river or forest and see how you feel afterward. If you want to feel like you're a good person, do things that a good person would do. If you want to make yourself proud and raise the esteem in which you hold yourself, do things that are aligned with your core values. It's worth the effort because a healthy self-esteem signals to your body that you belong. Brene Brown has this great quote from The Gifts of Imperfection that fitting in is about assessing a situation and becoming who you need to be to be accepted. Belonging, on the other hand, doesn't require us to change who we are, it requires us to be who we are. 
There are also certain situations when our self-esteem is more vulnerable, for example, in times of transition, when you're an expat moving to another country or as a woman going into midlife. I've recently been interviewed by Roma van der Wald. She's owner and principal at Vitel. That's an app for women who want to take better care of themselves uh, over the age of 40. And I'll link those videos in the description. If you happen to be in midlife as well, I hope you check them out. So to wrap up, a quick disclaimer, this is a YouTube video and not a therapy session. By saying compare yourself laterally, I'm also not making the case for everyone to stay in their lane. I absolutely support your goals for growth and development. Obviously, that's my job. Still, I provide these tips as reminders that your identity and sense of self contain many different facets. And although it's a social construct, your identity absolutely can evolve over time especially if you periodically take the time to re-examine your thoughts and when you apply some mindful awareness when it comes to the circles you move in, the people you spend time with and who you compare yourselves to. That's it from me for now. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. The algorithm likes that. And I'll see you again soon.